In the last 500 years, Filipinos have fought for freedom, unity, and equality. We have made our mark in many fields, from science and medicine to culture and the arts. We are beacons of creativity, resourcefulness, resiliency, and compassion. In 2021, the Filipino people will join the world in commemorating one of the greatest achievements of mankind, the first circumnavigation of the world. We celebrate this historic achievement by bannering an important message. Over adversity and struggles, we shall triumph, putting humanity first, always. ulit mga kapamana at nagbabalik po muli. Dito tayo ngayon ulit sa ating paboritong palatuntunang Pamana Talks at uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pagsubaybay po sa amin ngayong gabi. Ako po si Joel Aldor ang inyong host for tonight and as always, uh, we invite everyone to please like us on our Facebook page at uh, Grupo Kalinangan to uh, get updates and uh, uh, all the heritage trivia you would find uh, about uh, the Philippines and uh, about our heritage and history, especially uh, during our celebrations of the National Heritage Month. Also, uh, follow us on our Instagram and Twitter at our handle, Grupo Kalinangan. You can also subscribe to our official YouTube channel. Uh, you can just uh, search Grupo Kalinangan on the search bar and you can uh, subscribe to all our uh, upcoming Pamana Talks and other webinars there. And if you also want to receive uh, updates uh, via email for upcoming events and uh, other activities. So also subscribe to our official newsletter at our website at https grupokalinangan.org. You can also like us uh, through our NHCP's official Facebook page, our partner for our Pamana Talks. Like them at the facebook.com slash NHCP1933. You can see this on the, uh, uh, on, on the screen. Uh, the URL to the Facebook page, as well as the National Kinsentennial Committee uh, Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash NQC2021. As we are still in the thick of our uh, commemorations of the Kinsentennial, uh, we are still uh, giving you all the updates about the uh, different celebrations and the different uh, uh unveiling of the different uh, historic markers around the Visayas and Mindanao at uh, this will go all the way until around October of this year. So um, please uh, follow us on our uh, different social media accounts and uh, be sure to uh, get updated. So today is uh, May 14th and as I mentioned, we are in the thick of our celebrations for National Heritage Month. And by virtue of the uh, uh, presidential decree, uh, number or presidential proclamation rather number 439 uh, the National Heritage Month was uh, uh, was declared uh, uh, to give awareness and respect and love for our cultural heritage uh, and uh, all the, our traditions cultural traditions and all the historic monuments and sites around the country now for this year ang ating pagdiriwang po ng National Heritage Month ay mayroong temang Victory and Humanity, 
upholding Filipino heritage and identity bilang pakikiisa sa paggunita ng ikalimandaang anibersaryo na ng victory at maktan at ang ikalabing uh, limang daang anibersaryo ng bahagi ng Pilipinas sa unang pag-ikot sa mundo. Kaya binibigyan din din ng temang ito, Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity, ang pangangailangan na palakasin ang kalamaya, ka, kal, kamalayan ng publiko at tuklasin ang mga hakbangin sa pagtataguyod para sa konservasyon at pagsusulong ng pamana ng kultura ng Pilipinas at pagkahakin lang Pilipino sa oras ng krisis. At nga, of course, uh, for tonight, um, Another exciting webinar is uh, up for all of you, mga kapamana. At uh, sana po ay marami na naman po kayo makapupulutang aral galing po sa ating uh, guest speaker ngayon. Ngayon, bago pong lahat, gusto ko pong batiin uh, again ang mga sumusubaybay po sa ating webinar ngayon. Um, we'd like to uh, say hello and good evening to Miss Marie Andre Palion. Magandang hapon kay Robbie Valino from Nueva Ecija. Ayan. Uh, good evening, Mark Louis Parcasio. Good evening from uh, Tugigero City. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. I can definitely imagine it's so hot. I was in Naik yesterday. Um, uh, we were uh, actually doing a project uh, at the moment with some of our cultural mapping facilitators there. And uh, it is so hot. <laughs> it's quite unbearable. Um, magandang gabi at na. National Heritage Month po sa lahat mula sa tanggapan ng turismo ng pamahalaang bayan ng Cavinti. I think I know you, uh, Miss Mirna Len Pautan. <laughs> Magandang gabi po sa iyo. <laughs> good evening po, uh, Romel Robin. And uh, good evening watching from Loa National Technical Vocational High School, Southern Leyte. And um, naimbag, Arabi, uh, naimbag Arabi kadat. Kada tayo, Amin, watching from Lawag City, Ilocos Norte. Hi, Batch 11. <laughs> uh, from Cagayan, good evening po. Uh, R.D. Garcia Ondahon. Um, good evening, watching from Balawan, La Union. Charming Lulu Rodriguez uh, Olbinado. Um, and Miss Keith Rivera. Good evening, uh, Miss Keith. Good evening po sa'yo. And uh, Audrey Trinidad, good evening po sa iyo as well. So, um, I suppose uh, everyone here is uh, pretty excited to uh, uh, start uh, this webinar as uh, many of you would uh, be quite inclined in terms of understanding heritage and architecture uh, and in the, through the lens of heritage conservation. But of course, before we start our lecture, let me flash to you first our guidelines, our webinar guidelines. So, uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, just uh, today, marami pa rin po sa ating mga first-time viewers po ng ating uh, Pamana Talks. Make sure that you're viewing the live stream via a reliable internet connection. Uh, make sure that you check your audio and wear a nice pair of headphones. Also, you can view the YouTube live stream on our Grupo Kalinangan YouTube channel if you have problems viewing the Facebook live stream. Now, for all registered participants who have been, uh, who are able to uh, register for tonight's uh, webinar, uh, and if you're at the Pamana Community Facebook group, the GKI Pamana Community Facebook group, make sure that you grant StreamYard permission to see your name at streamyard.com slash Facebook. Ito po, yung mga hindi po namin makita kasi Facebook user pa rin yung nakasulat, like ito, from Balanga City, Bataan. Hello po, pero hindi po namin makilala kayo because hindi nyo po plan na ito nagagawa. So please make sure that you go to streamyard.com slash Facebook and just click this button. Uh, you see this button there? Let StreamYard see your Facebook live comments para po makilala po namin kayo sa inyong pangalan when we acknowledge you sa mga shoutouts at kapag magtatanong po kayo ng question sa aming uh, speaker for tonight. Okay? Isang beses niya lang po yung gagawin. You don't need to do it again. Just make sure that uh, you uh, uh, um, authorize StreamYard. Okay? Now, all registered participants may post their questions uh, through the, to the speaker through the comments section on the Facebook or YouTube live stream. And we'll do our best to accommodate all your questions during the time allotted for the webinar. Now, if you want to also personally ask a question to the speaker via video conference, please join us through the video conference link to be posted on the GKI Pamana Community Facebook group. 
So make sure to check your camera and mic settings so the speaker can see you. So yung mga gustong sumama po sa amin sa video conference to personally ask a question at makita po kayo ng, inyong, uh, ng aming uh, uh, speaker tonight, please make sure that you check your mic and camera settings before uh, you join our web conference. Uh, and for those who um, have registered, ito po, paulit-ulit po namin ito sinasabi sa inyo, make sure that you fill out the evaluation form uh, after the webinar. The link to the evaluation form will be posted on the GTI Pamana Community Facebook group a few minutes after the online lecture ends. This evaluation form will only be available until midnight tonight. And make sure that you fill out your email address correctly. Kasi marami pong sa amin na nakaka-receive ng mga emails. Bakit di pa po namin nare-receive ang aming uh, e-certificate? Baka naman po kasi mali yung email address na, na itype po ninyo. So please make sure that you type your email address correctly. Okay? And finally, let's create a culture of sharing. Have fun and share this live stream to your family and friends. Okay? So, that being said, uh, I guess uh, we can start. Oh! Before that, nako, bunti ka na po makalimutan. Pasalamatan din po natin ang ating mga sumusunod na grupo, mga Facebook pages na tumutulong po sa ating palatuntunan ngayon. I also wanted to thank uh, our partners, the Angono Cultural Heritage Office, the Cagayan Museum and, uh, and Historical Research Center, the Museo ni Maramo Magsaysay, the Negros Museum in Bacolod, the Bantayan Parish Museum, the Bolhoan Parish Museum, all in Cebu, Museo ng Gumaka, uh, the Makati Poblacion, uh, Heritage Conservation Project, Tuklas, Pilipinas, Bantay Kasaysayan, Museum Pambayan ng Morong, the Cagayan Heritage Conservation Society, the Tagig Heritage Society, at uh, mga kaibigan po natin sa Advocates for Heritage Preservation, and yung mga kaibigan po natin sa Local Historical Committees Network. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong suporta at sa pagsubaybay po sa aming pamana talks. Okay, so back to our show now, and let's start our program. Okay, now, um, just to let you in on a, a bit of an insider story here. You know? uh, for many of you who know me, you know, I've been in this uh, heritage field for about, what, 13 years now? Um, it's been a very uh, pleasant journey so far. And, you know, I have my own heritage stories to tell as well. I've got uh, a, a really good number of, you know, success stories as well as failures in this field. Um uh, meaning ko rin na hindi naman po ito, you know, it's not a bed of roses uh, uh, in, in this journey. And um, I would definitely say I'm pretty proud of my own journey in this field. But, you know, one of the things that I wish I could have done myself when I was younger, you know, um, is to actually take up architecture. <laughs> and in fact, um, as many of my friends who would personally know me, would attest to this, no? I should have taken up architecture back in college. Um, uh, siguro, i-share ko na rin. When I was, uh, when when I graduated in, in 2000 from high school, I, uh, uh, my first uh, choice really was uh, architecture in USD. But, well, you know, fate, fate had other plans for me. Uh, my parents wanted me to become an engineer and um uh, eventually, however, uh, and around that time, I became very interested with computers. So I ended up uh, taking a computer course. So, <laughs> uh, and now, you know, I'm an architect myself, but just of a different kind. You know, instead of designing buildings, I design IT systems. I work for um, uh, for different uh, enterprises. And today, I, I work for a bank. And, uh, you know, I, I design banking systems instead of buildings. So, you know, for me, there would always be those what ifs in my mind, you know, what if I actually finished architecture and became an architect myself? You know, will I be able to uh, undertake projects related to conservation of our architectural heritage as an architect? You know? uh, but more importantly, uh, will I have a different understanding of uh, heritage? if I actually took up architecture as compared to taking up uh, computers, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, there, there's a lot of what ifs, but those are the recurring uh, questions in my mind. And they would always be there probably until the day that I die, unless I finally, you know, um, 
jump ship and uh, finally take up architecture. Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, well, pretty sure all of us here will have their own understanding of heritage and architecture because, you know, each and every one of us will would have went through uh, their own journeys and each one of us will have different explorations, different insights, uh, different realizations. But one thing's for sure, you know, being immersed in this field of heritage creates an impact in contributing to the deepening of our understanding and appreciation of architecture and vice versa. You know? How do we understand architecture from the lens of heritage? And how do we understand heritage from the lens of architecture? And we'll have our own ways of interpreting the relationships between heritage and architecture and between architecture and heritage. And so tonight, we're very, very glad to have a guest speaker who will be sharing with us his own various personal explorations about heritage and architecture from the lens of heritage conservation. So let me introduce to you our guest speaker for tonight. Our guest speaker, he obtained uh, his professional degree in architecture in 1988 from the University of Notre Dame in Indiana in the United States, where he was a Notre Dame scholar. In June 20, 2005, he received the University of Notre Dame Distinguished Asian Pacific Alumni Award. And he also studied architecture for a year at Notre Dame's campus in Rome, Italy, and pursued graduate studies in architecture at Pratt Institute in New York. And he's a, a licensed architect in the Philippines, but until his return to the Philippines in the late 1990s, he maintained the license to practice architecture in New York. So he was an architect, a licensed architect uh, elsewhere before he became an architect here in the Philippines. He represents the Philippines in the International Scientific Committee on 20th Century Heritage or ISC 20C of the International Council on Monuments and Sites or ECOMOS. He was president of ECOMOS Philippines from 2014 to 2017, and he helped guide the public-private initiative to revive Escolta, the Manila's historic downtown, and as an advisor to the Escolta Commercial Association Incorporated, or ECAI, from 2011 to 2013. He was a representative on the Executive Council of the National Committee on Monuments and Sites, or NCMS, of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. So ladies and gentlemen, para po sa ating webinar, na may pamagat na heritage as a way to understand architecture, an architect's journey. Malagod po namin pinakikilala po sa inyo, si architect Dominic Galicia. Hello, Dominic. How are you? Good evening. Good evening, Joel. Thank you very much for, for inviting me. And uh, good evening to all your guests. Happy Heritage Thank you for Month being... to you. Uh, thank you very yeah, much happy as Heritage well. Happy Heritage Month to you also, Joel. How are you Kenneth, doing? It's sir? quite in, quite interesting what you. I didn't know you wanted to be an architect, uh, and uh, I think you you would have you would have been a good one, you know. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So. Well, now you but, know. But you you're know but story. you're good at I what mean... you do now, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, how are you doing so far? Doing okay. Um, managing to. Uh, uh, to, to accommodate ourselves with this new normal. Uh, mm -hmm. We continue with uh, our work. Most of us are work from home. Once in a while, we go to the office or we go to the sites. Uh, but generally, it's, it's work from home. So uh, so now we, yeah. we are really <laughs> using the, the technology like we are now, you know, of uh, communication. So it's very interesting. It's, a, it's an interesting new normal. How's your experience so far in the field? Um, amid the restrictions brought about by this ongoing pandemic. I mean, of course, well, it, it, it's uh, really, working from home is the default. Yeah, no, but it, it's really using a lot of the technology. Uh, you know, we, a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, a lot of presentations on Zoom, a lot of meetings with the clients on Zoom and the, with the other consultants on Zoom. And it's interesting that uh, one way or another, we're, we're still able to move forward. You know, we're still able to uh, share ideas and come up with new ideas together uh, in this new environment. So I, I find I'm, I'm, mm. I'm quite fascinated with it, actually. Um, and I'm also happy that we remain, uh, yeah, we, we, we're still able to manage. <laughs> I'm grateful <laughs> for that. Yeah. Um, so uh, 
we're, we're very glad to hear that uh, you're thriving. Um, and uh, especially now that uh, we are easing our way towards the new normal uh, as the vaccinations are rolling out and uh, more people are getting, um, uh, are recovering uh, as well as rebuilding their lives after this uh, this whole you know period of lockdowns, I think it will be a you know this th- this whole uh, event you know that lasted for more than a year would somewhat be a catalyst to probably a new era in architecture that that remains to be seen. But hopefully, this is something that would. I, I, um, re- I think it's true what you're saying because uh, yeah. we now have a, a greater regard for, for fresh air and for natural light uh, in the same way that uh, you know our predecessors did. So it's kind of an it's a very actually it's, it's a it's a, it's a quite a monumental eye opener. Yep. So, so with that, uh, let's start your uh, talk for tonight. Heritage as a way to understand architecture. Let me just. Uh, uh, share my um let me just share my screen uh since i'll be the one controlling your slides one second okay all right so there you go take it away sir dom okay thank you thank you i uh, just to uh let everyone know my presentation is divided in in two halves no uh, the first half will pertain to my background in architecture and then as well as my background in conservation. So it's, it's going to be a kind of, uh, uh, you know, somewhat autobiographical because as, as, uh, as uh, the title says, this is kind of a journey, an architect's journey. And then the second half uh, pertains to, to specifically uh, the work that uh, we've done and the work that we're doing uh, that consists both of a freestanding architecture or, or, or new design, as well as work in in conservation and uh, and adaptive reuse uh, next slide please yeah. uh, next slide joe uh, uh, sorry uh sorry uh, back back one slide back one slide uh, yes uh the when the more i thought about it the more i realized that as i was preparing this talk that uh, the work that I do as an architect, whether in, in making of, of new form or, or in the adaptive reuse of existing form, is very much informed by these two lenses of architecture and heritage. So this title could very well have also been extended to architecture as a way to, to understand heritage. You know, the, the lens of architecture used to understand heritage and the lens of heritage uh, used to understand architecture. But in fact, I think at the, the heart of the matter is that in many ways it's the same lens, you know, except that one lens is older than the other. I mean, it, it could very well be the same lens, but in different uh, moments in time. So next slide, please. So I'd like to begin with, uh, I, the, with this uh, with this image of what I'd say is my first encounter with architecture. Uh, I, I show that the image in the lower left of the media center or the library in my in my high school. And the day one, one day in my freshman or sophomore year, I discovered this book. It is a it is quite a big book at eleven by I think it's eleven by seventeen. Uh, it is a it is a paperback, probably published by the United States uh, uh, Information Agency, uh, but it had such impact on me because it was all about these pictures of architecture. Uh, I, I knew next to nothing about architecture. There were no architects in my in my family. Uh, I think I had you know uh, my, my my father's you know second cousin uh, who I'd never met was I, I heard was an architect, but. But, but immediately the immediate impact of architecture on me as a as a as a as a career was uh, was very was unknown right and so to see these pictures uh, and uh, you know photos by the, of of the work of of Frank Lloyd Wright you can see in the upper left falling water uh, and then followed by the uh, uh, 
TWA terminal by, by Aero Sarnen and then Mies van der Seagram building. I don't even know if these are the actual uh, pictures in the book, but they, but they represented that kind of, of impact of architecture on my, on my young mind, right? It is, it is so impactful that I just kept borrowing the book. I think there was a, a two-week limit to, to, to uh, borrowing a book from the library. And at the, you know, at the end of the period, I would go back to the library and, and, and check it out again. I think I had that book in, I, I don't know, for, for what seemed like, like, like many months, right? So that, was, so that planted in me the seed of becoming an architect. Because frankly, my, my background really, as far as I was involved in, 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 in school activities, was with, with the newspaper. I was always uh, involved with the newspaper of, of our school. But eventually, I did, I did end up studying architecture. Uh, uh, next slide, please. And next slide, please, Joe. And this was at the, at the University of, of Notre Dame. Now, uh, I, I, I'm showing you some key moments in, in, my, uh, in my academic life, right? And there was this key moment in sophomore year when uh, our, you know, in, in, in architecture school, you have, you have studio. We had studio three times a week. And we had, for, for one semester, our instructor, uh, a woman named Professor Esme Bellialta, she brought these photocopies of, uh, from a book uh, that contained the quotations of this architect I didn't know. He's an Amer he was, he was the, the Ar American architect Louis Kahn. And it was a, a book called, uh, I think it's called Silence and Light. And it had, you know, images of, of Kahn's work, as well as these very strange uh, aphorisms. For me, as a, as a, as a, as a young uh, a college sophomore, right? Things like, you know, a great building must begin with the unmeasurable, must go through the measure, through measurable, measurable means when it is being designed, and in the end must be unmeasurable. This was this was completely mysterious to me, the notion of the of the unmeasurable in 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 in, in buildings. All material in nature, the mountains and the streams and the air and we are made of light, which has been spent. And this crumpled mass called material casts its shadow, casts a shadow, and the shadow belongs to light. And so the use of these words, light and, and the unmeasurable in relation to architecture was, 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 was so strange, but, 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 so, but so fascinating. And later on, it became very clear that Mr. Khan was one of the best articulators of that essential element of architecture and of heritage. And this is the ineffable, the, the wordless. Next slide, please. So the third year, so that is sophomore year, the third year of architecture at the University of, of, of Notre Dame takes place in Rome. And so I show here this uh, a Google Earth view of, of, of the central uh, part of the, uh, the historic part of, of Rome. The green arrow points to the entrance of our studio on Via Monterone. The white arrow points to the entrance of our hotel on, on Piazza del Paradiso. So the studio and the, and the hotel were anchors of our daily lives as students, as were uh, the Pantheon and the Piazza Navona. Uh, you can see the, the, the Pantheon as that, that large circle, circular object on the uh, a little bit above the, the green arrow. And then you can see the, the Piazza Navona as the, this large piazza, this, this uh, long piazza, somewhere in the upper left of the picture. But what was key about this in, in our daily lives was that not far from the Pantheon was a place called, well, what we it, it, in our Notre Dame class would call Pizza Pantheon. It wasn't really called Pizza Pantheon. It just happened to be the cheapest source of pizza uh, for us. Uh, and it happened to be uh, near the Pantheon. So that's where we would go often for, for lunch. And it became for us and, and for, for me uh, a, a daily practice to, to enter the Pantheon. Uh, this, this, this ancient Roman structure that had this, 
that has this this uh, this opening in the middle or this this oculus, and to see the uh, the light, the, the 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 sunlight travel across the, the surface of the ceiling in in a different place depending on the on the time of day or the or the or the season of the year, and this uh, this had this an exposure to us, an exposure to the sublime. Uh, it became a, a very important experience for us. Uh, you can see, uh, just to show the, on the upper left and upper right, are, are pictures of me with my classmates. And the lower left is a picture of us in front of the Pantheon. Next slide, please. Also in the third year in Rome was an important uh, moment for, for for us and for me uh, personally, was to be exposed to the work, to be introduced to the work of Carlo Scarpa, the great Italian architect Carlo Scarpa. It was just, it was mind blowing how how creative the forms were, how creative the 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 the, the juxtaposition of of, of material, uh, how how the details came together, and as is as a as a uh, a subtext to this is that a lot of his work was taking place in in existing old buildings. I mean, I didn't know it then, but but this was my first uh, in, strong encounter with adaptive reuse because the the, the upper left you see the the museum of the, of the Corini Stampaglia in 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 Venice, uh, and the lower left is the Olivetti sh uh, showroom also in Venice, and the upper right is the these two pictures of the Castel Vecchio. Museum in Verona. They're all examples of later on, uh, to be using the term, they were, they're all examples of adaptive reuse. But to to us, you know, to us to be to see his work for the first time, this was all so such fresh, such fresh architecture. And and of course later on it would it would you know we would realize that you know fresh architecture can happen in this dialogue between old and new that occurs in, in adaptive reuse. You know, and so someone like Carlos Scarpa who does work like that also, you know, in the lower right, you know, does free, uh, new and, and free form uh, just as well. So that was a great introduction for us. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, and it and another key moment, uh, probably one of the most important experiences for me as a student was my fifth and last year of architecture school, uh, which is our the thesis year in architecture. The, uh, my project was a, a new parliament building, a new parliament complex on, on, on the reclaimed area where, where the Mall of Asia uh, now stands. Um, so this is work we were doing, I, I was doing on campus. And just to show you that uh, the green arrow is pointing to the to the architecture building, uh, which is you see a photograph of, and so, you know, the I had gone I had gone home uh, that for the summer vacation to do research for for my for my thesis, right? And I had gone back to to campus full of ideas about you know, fantastic new forms to to do for for this for this uh, uh, parliament complex. But my thesis advisor, his name was uh, Professor Stephen Hurt. He he said something to me that is, that is very very uh, consequential. Um, and and at that time, it, it seemed like a, a like like cold water. He said, "Begin at the beginning." And I was showing all these, but he told me to begin at the beginning. Begin at the beginning of the architecture of the Philippines. And, 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 it, and it became, therefore, a, an exercise in, in trying to understand how architecture in the Philippines was generated, both historically and, and metaphorically, right? I mean, there was no internet in, in 1987, so I, I'm not sure how I, I managed to get a copy of the, the, the Zial Sita and Tino book called Ancestral Houses of the Philippines, but this became a kind of guidebook for me in understanding the roots of Philippine architecture form. And, and in so doing, you know, with this fresh start, I realized it became, the experience was, it was going back to the beginning, was an inspiration for fresh form. It was, it was exciting. It was, it, was, it, was, it was like a brave new world for me, right? 
And so that experience, as, as instigated by Professor Hurt, became a template for me for how I have designed ever since, which is to go back to the beginning, almost like to the beginning of time, right? Uh, and also, by the way, you know, in that, in that moment of understanding and doing research on, on Philippine architecture, it became very important to, to realize the role of the climate, the role of the, of the sun in, in our architecture. Next slide, please. So that, is the, that was the, the, the extent of my, my experience with, uh, um, you know, academically. Now I'd like to do a little bit about, uh, talk a little bit about my background in, in, in conservation. Uh, and I, I, I must say that an important moment for me in, uh, in, in, in conservation was when I became a member of the Heritage Conservation Society. And uh, I, I invite everyone, by the way, to, to join this, uh, this, this wonderful organization. Uh, but it was when I was a fledgling member of the, of the Heritage Conservation Society that uh, the High Allied debacle was taking place in, in, in 2000. So, I mean, as, aside from all that was, that was happening to, to, uh, you know, to this wonderful uh, Art Deco structure, I mean, it occurred to me very strongly at that moment that, uh, you know, adaptive reuse was, was so clearly the answer here, right? I mean, you see that the... the Picture on the, on, on the upper left of, of its of its demolition. This is a and then uh, on the lower left of uh, uh, well, the, the courts uh, right before the demolition, and then on the right is this image we we created of you know how that court could have been used as another court. You know instead of a, a court for high light, it could have been a court uh, for for the hall of justice, which was going to be uh, uh, built in, on this on this site. So that was a, 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 a strong a moment of, of understanding, you know, how adaptive reuse could, could really come into play. Uh, next slide, please. And as a, as a member of the Heritage Conservation Society, I was assigned to be its representative to the National Committee of Monuments and Sites, or the NCMS. Uh, I was there for, for two terms. Um, and there was one particularly uh, uh, important memorable moment for me uh, was when the, the, uh, it came to our attention that the provincial capital of Misamis Occidental in Oroqueta City was in danger of being, uh, being, being rehabilitated beyond recognition. Um, so you can see that the Juan Arellano image on the, on the left and then a uh, post-war picture of it uh, in the middle, and then on the right, on the upper right, was the proposal of, of building this new structure uh, on the side and just using the skin of this one Arellano structure um, as a, purely as just a, as, as a skin or, or a mask, right? Um, and, and so we, we uh, as, a, as a member of, of NCMS, we were a team that went to uh, uh, Orochieta City, and, and, and it was with, with the lens of architecture that we were able to, 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 to appreciate what was still present in the building. You can see in the, in the middle left, uh, you know, the, the, the facade with its, uh, what I believe are these Monty, uh, uh, possibly Monty uh, windows, right, describing describing uh, a, 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 a tall space behind. But if you look at the pictures, the picture on the right, you know, that tall space, what had been session hall, was divided into, into you know, the ceiling was lowered and, and divided into, uh, into uh, se I think, uh, two floors and with rooms behind it. And so, you know, this was all, this session hall, this historic session hall was going to be lost, you know, in this uh, proposed rehabilitation. So, uh, thankfully, we were able to uh, have a, an audience with the uh, with the governor, a very uh, enlightened governor, or Herminia Ramiro, who who saw that okay, this project had to be rethought, and and, and indeed it is rethought in a way that preserved the original Juan Arellano building. As you see now, I have this Google Earth image in the lower right showing it uh, 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 preserved. Uh, in, in, in 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 the the only picture I have the inside actually is uh, in the lower uh, middle. Uh, a progress image of, of uh, the session hall with it, its uh, you know all the all the, the accretions of time the the, the floors 
of, of, of different interventions having been removed. So next slide, please. Another key moment uh, uh, for me was uh, the experience of, of, of Escolta. Um, ten, ten years ago, my, my family was on, on vacation in Spain and we were, we were visiting Barcelona. And I was walking on the streets, these wonderful uh, streets of, of, of Barcelona and noticing the, the chamfered walls, the chamfered corners of the city blocks. And, 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 and the memory came into play of, I know, I, I've seen this, this, this chamfered corners before in, in Manila. Where, 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 where is it? I, I'd seen this, this before. And of course, I, I recall that soon enough, I'd seen this in Escolta, the, 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 the chamfered uh, corners of, of Escolta were coming to mind because of the, of the, of the trip to Barcelona. And so that, that, uh, that, that led me to uh, a, a, a year or, 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 or two years of, of every uh, of Thursday morning meeting with the uh, Descot Commercial Association to, uh, uh, to, to, to think of ways of, of, of reviving Escolta. So this is, I'd just like to say that you know, this is an encouragement to all of us to participate in, in community. Right, uh, whatever community that is, whether, whether it's you know it is a place like Escolta or in your own uh, uh, town or or, or or city, I mean there there are ups and downs, right, in in, in such uh, involvement. But overall, there are, are there are there are psychic rewards. Uh, and for me personally, with Escolta, you know, just the opportunity to to be in these buildings like the like the like the Regina or or the First United Building. Uh, was a wonderful education for me uh, as an architect. The, on the on the far left, you see El Hogar. You know the these tall ceilings, uh, the the uh, this wonderful sense of of of, of Ali Wallace, right? And of course, you know we we have the PNB on the right, now gone, right? But you know the it's as if these culturally significant buildings are, are people, and they're they're telling us that they don't want to go yet, right? And so it is our role, whether as architects or as uh, as as just as citizens to, to to try to keep them alive for as long as they can because they can still continue to be to be useful. Um, next slide, please. Yes, and, and then in, in 2015, uh, as a as a member of of, of ECOMOS, the International Council of Monuments and Sites, uh, I was uh, sent to uh, Ishandigar uh, as part of the uh, the UNESCO uh, team to assess. The, uh, the the candidacy of the capital complex designed by Le Corbusier to be in the World Heritage List, but this for me was a was such a a, a powerful moment when of, of realizing that really you know architecture is heritage and and heritage is is architecture right it's a it's a it's a it's a continuum that really has more to do with time than with with uh, any like particular uh, specialization or, or, or category, right? I mean, when 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 you know when it enters into the realm of the of the sublime, where it has this impact on visitors, uh, when it has when it has impact on 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 us, it 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 really becomes you know this this confluence, this this this, this same lens of architecture as heritage and and heritage as, as architecture. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, uh, and then most recently, uh, earl earlier this year, we, uh, we we had this we, we, as part of of, of the the Masayana team, a modern ASEAN architecture uh, a team of the of the Philippines. We, we uh, came up with a list of the the top, the most significant, the most significant, the twenty most significant post-war uh, buildings in in Metro Manila. So. You know, we, we developed the, the chronology of it, right? But in, in understanding, uh, you know, this this list, there was an there was an opportunity to, with the lens of architecture, to understand the narrative, you know, or the conceptual trajectory of these buildings. So these are not just buildings in a you know in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a calendar. These are buildings that they're telling the story of of ourselves as a as a as a people, right? And so you know that the that first that upper left shows them in a kind of a uh, simple, straightforward 
chronology, but the lower right shows them in terms of the trajectory, right? The lower left, the first building on the list, uh, Quezon Hall by, by Juan Nakpil in the University of the Philippines, right, was an early uh, 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 initiative of, of, of us to, to express ourselves architecturally. But in this case, it was still taking, uh, referring quite closely to foreign precedent. And then the last building on this list is the San Miguel, uh, San Miguel Corporation headquarters by the Banyosa brothers, which I feel is, is one of the most powerful buildings we have in, in this country because of the way that it takes a local, you know, it, the, the, uh, 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 the context, the, our local context is used as a, uh, as a framework for expressing our, our, our ambition and our, and our, our our upward trajectory as a as a nation, and so this was you know to see that architecture you know this lens of architecture to understand the the, the story of these buildings. You know. uh, next slide, please. And and so then to to, to conclude this this part about uh, uh, you know my my, my background. Uh, my academic as well as my, my, my conservation background. You know, I think it's important to, to bring to, and I, I showed you images of, of Louis Kahn and, and Carlos Carpa and Stephen Hurt, but another important uh, person in this, in this uh, uh, journey is Augusto Villalon, the late Augusto Villalon, uh, architect and, uh, and, uh, and world-renowned uh, uh, conservation uh, expert from the Philippines. Who was a guide and a guru to to many of many of us in the Heritage Conservation Society, as well as in in Ecomos Philippines. He was of of international stature, but what was very important about him, his presence and his wisdom, was that he was always a calm and measured voice, and he was a foe of the draconian. For him, conservation and heritage were were instruments of of community. Uh, they were not. They were not, uh, you know, they, they 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 were not uh, 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 artifacts in a, in, a, in a museum. They, were, you know, heritage is part of of life, and heritage is part of people uh, becoming their better selves. Right? Uh, he understood that, that 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 conservation is is not just not, not just black or, or white, but, but a, a spectrum of, of consideration. Uh, so I, now, now the, in, the, in the remaining time I have left, I would like now to uh, go uh, to the next slide and to talk about uh, projects. Uh, so the next slide, please. So this is, I, I show this, uh, this is actually my, my first project, uh, which is the Adoration Chapel at, uh, at, at St. Alphonsus Mary de Liguri Parish Church also known as Magallanes Village. I'm showing this because this was a really a, a, a moment, you know, one of my, my first public project, and it was, it was, I was bringing Carlos Car what I what I'd learned from Carlos Carpa, you know, from the work of Carlos Carpa into, into this project in terms of the dialogue between, between old and new and also among, among different materials. But it was also important about this project was, was it, it was helping to, uh, going back to what to what what Stephen Hurt, Professor Stephen Hurt, had, had 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 told me when I was doing thesis, you know, to go back to the beginning and going back to the beginning uh, refers to the value of the narrative of a of a of a project, the value of its story, right? In this case, the story of of, uh, of Saint Alphonse de Liguri himself. Uh, next slide, please. So that was in uh, in in, in two thousand, and then. In, in, in 2004, there was, a, there was a fire, and there was therefore a, there, a, a need to rebuild. What's interesting, I, there, there are many things. I've, 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 I've given lectures where I've spoken largely about this project only, but just for now, what I want to focus on is that there was an opportunity to start from scratch, because, uh, you know, uh, someone was saying, you know, in, 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 the, in the community was saying, oh, you know, architect, you know, it's so inconvenient to have to retain the structure that of, of Magallanes Church because it had gone through a fire in 2004, right? And there was a need to rebuild. And so, and so the, it was, of course, the greatest of inconveniences, right? Uh, 
And and so the, you know, I was asked, you know, architect, you know, this is a chance to, for you to, to start from scratch, build something new. It will be, you know, architect Galicia, right? Uh, but owing to my to my uh, affiliation with with the Heritage Conservation Society and my and what I had learned up to that of that that moment and 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 you know, experience the, the fresh experience of high life being demolished in in two thousand was still a fresh wound. You know, we had to fight this notion of the tabula rasa or the clean slate. I mean, look at Intramuros and how how much of it, how much of of what still remained of ruins were just were just wiped away, right? To, cl to create a, a tabula rasa, in which case uh, the narrative is lost, right? The narrative is lost, and, and in any project, in any project, the narrative is essential. You know, the, the story is essential because you know therein lies the significance of of the project. And also, you know, this was for me another, another important lesson learned about meaning, right? In a project, you know, a project has meaning and that meaning can be uh, respected and preserved, but it can also be augmented, right? I, if you look at the lower left, the, 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 the picture of the, of the buttresses designed uh, by, by Loxin in the, in the original structure, you know, they, they survived the fire, but they were essentially hollow, right? And you know they 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 they, they, they spoke of this you know great sense of support. And so what we what we did for the for the project because we were now uh, you know under this great series of vaults, right? Vaults with a, with a lateral trajectory. A lateral trajectory uh, was then to be aided by putting palaman or 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 or. Uh, uh, mass inside these hollow buttresses so that these hollow buttresses then their meaning was augmented you know in this in this in the act of this of this project of of of, of uh, uh, building this church rebuilding the church the meaning of this hollow buttresses was was augmented because they became really meaningful uh structure so so, so not just a, an overall narrative of resurrection and grace, but also of renewed purpose. Next slide, please. The next slide, please. The next slide is uh, th this is a, in a, a smaller a smaller project. This is Social Hall in the Saint Hildegard Building in Saint Scholastica's, Saint Scholastica's College in in Manila, designed by by Cesar Concho um, in nineteen uh, in nineteen thirty nine. But I just uh, want to show. You know the the condition it was in. The, we were to convert this into a uh, uh, the Maria Fe Perez Agudo Center for Leadership Excellence. That social hall. If you look at the upper half of the slide, you know you'll see how the the corridor that surrounded the central space was occupied by by by, by rooms and, and mezzanines that over over time had occupied uh, uh, this this tall this tall corridor. As you can see in the upper right, a picture of uh, you know. Corridors occupying the the, the arches. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. And so, the the our proposal was to was to restore the the, um, the corridor that, that surrounded the the main space, uh, and and this became therefore you know a it comes to mind that you know conservation is the act of of reinforcing the architecture. The architecture had been very much compromised by by these these uh, these new mezzanines. So you can see here the upper the upper half of the slide. You see, you know, the mezzanines had been removed. You know, revealing you know the arches. Uh, and you can see, you know, in the middle in the upper middle picture, there's there's a door still floating where where a mezzanine had been. But it was also interesting if you see in the lower in the lower uh, three pictures, the lower uh, pictures, that windows that had been hidden. Uh, were revealed, and so this act of, of of conservation becomes an opportunity to bring in light, right? I mean, light that is that is that is natural as well as light that is that is mystical, right? That, that be, it becomes a a new uh, sense of, of of understanding this space. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So the next slide shows you the uh, you know this 
the, the new space, showing this dialogue between between the old and the new, between structure and this and this new purpose. Uh, you can see the this layer of sliding glass doors that, that surround the space, uh, framed in black uh, with "Ora et Labora," the, the Benedictine motto of uh, of, of Saint Scholastica, etched in glass. And then you can see the pictures on the right; the, the mezzanines are moved, revealing the the corridors in their in their in their full glory. Next slide, please. So the next slide uh, goes to the, uh, the the next slide, please. The, the a project that uh, hopefully uh, many of you may have already visited, which is the National Museum of, of Natural History, uh, the former Department of Agriculture, then of Tourism, completed in 1939, uh, designed by Antonio Toledo. The project began in in, in, 20, in 2013 and uh, uh, was completed in in 2018. But in, you know, for 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 us in the in the team, this is again a a, a, a wonderful opportunity to, to experience how how the lens of, of of architecture overlaps with the lens of of heritage. If you look at the at the tree of life in the on the upper right, the the, the in the very center of the of the of the courtyard, right? So it is it is the you know the tree of life is, is the it's the center of the architectural. Narrative. It, it's the center of the of the of the story of of this place, but it's also, in the most practical, pragmatic way, the center, the best place to put the uh, uh, the, the the a new the new foundation. Uh, if you know, as far as structural engineering is concerned, you know, the very center, as far away from the surrounding walls, was the best place to build something new. So this 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 overlap of of narrative and and uh, and uh, uh, pragmatism was a, a a wonderful occasion. Next slide, please. So the next slide shows you uh, a you know the the uh, the lens of of of, of conservation uh, being applied for us to understand the hierarchy of significance in, in this project. And clearly, you know, Marble Hall, uh, which, you, which you see in the, in, the, in the middle, was, you know, the most, or one of the most important spaces in the, in the, in the project and therefore had to be uh, restored. And you can see on the left how it was before the restoration. It was uh, with, with this kiosk where you got your travel tax refund. And then, so that was the, if, if I can break it down, and that you could think of it as that's the lens of conservation that helps us develop this hierarchy of significance. Then taking it to the right, the image on the right, you see the lens of architecture that helps us understand spatial experience and, and procession. You know, the you can see that in the in the third picture from the left, this this wavy wall, right, which we we removed in order that we'd have this new connection between uh, the the lobby and and the tree of life. Courtyard. I mean, that was you know this is very much where where conservation and, and architecture come together to create a an important new experience of arrival. Next slide, please. The next slide shows uh, it, it, in one corner of of uh, of the structure is uh, what is uh, uh, what we call Ayala Hall, right? Ayala Hall. If you if you see the the image, you know each each corner of the of the building has these these double height windows, which suggest that behind these double height windows are are double height spaces. But in actuality, in this particular corner, you know it wasn't a double height space. It is it is two floors and with a jump with a with a jumble of rooms uh, on those on those two floors. So this at this corner, this important corner of the building, was therefore an opportunity to express you know. To let adaptive reuse be an instrument of expression, the expression or the fulfillment of potential, you know, the potential, uh, and the fulfillment of promise. Right? We have this, this, this double height window as seen from the outside. So therefore, let it be a double height window as seen from the as experienced inside. So you know, here in this in this architectural construct is 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 this expression of of, of potential and promise fulfilled. Next slide, please. So in the next slide, uh, we see, uh, uh, you know, we, 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 in, the, in this the the, the the tree of life uh, uh, courtyard. You know, we 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 see conservation not as a means 
of understanding architecture, but also of of creating it, right? And who is this? I mean, who? who, who I mean, it, it comes, you know, it, it comes to mind that, you know, there is a bit of a, you know, this, you know, the, the shaft of light that's, that, 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 that struck, that struck, uh, that strikes one in, in, in the Pantheon is here uh, uh, abstracted into this, 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 this many uh, shadows of, shadows and, 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 and patches of light, right? Of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a dome that has shadows travel on the, on the side of the courtyard, on the, on the floor of the courtyard, uh, very much expressive of its centrality in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the middle of this project. Next slide, please. So the next slide. Uh, so I have, uh, this, this is a project in, um, in Intramuros. Uh, the upper left uh, picture shows a, it's a before of the site in which you have the, the Herald building uh, at a newspaper building, a news, the newspaper headquarters building uh, from uh, the late 1940s uh, shares uh, uh, shares the, this this large property with the with the 7-Eleven uh, uh, the blue 7-Eleven building at the at the corner, and so uh, this this is actually this is actually two projects. It started first with the you know with the Herald building that we. Uh, we restored and it is adaptively reused into not no longer the Herald newspaper building, but the Herald building uh, with uh, with commercial spaces and uh, and dormitory spaces and and apartments. And then when the when the when the time came, as you see in the upper right, you know the it's 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 a building that goes around a, a central courtyard. And so when the time came to uh, to to develop the rest of the site because. Herald Building was, you know, is is a is a is a very successful uh, a commercial venture, uh, and so the time came to to develop the rest of the site and to build a new building, which we call Hark, the Hark Building. Uh, the it was an interesting opportunity, uh, an interesting kind of opportunity and challenge because we, we were required by the by the uh, the Intramuros uh, the, the Intramuros Code that a new building must look like a building from uh, 189 a Spanish Filipino 1890s building and so we we, we took a uh, cues from uh, an ancestor of the of the of the owner uh, the the paterno mansion on, on Hidalgo to 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 uh, in, to uh, as a reference for the uh, for the facade of this uh, new structure the the Hark building uh, but inside it is it is decidedly modern you know we have this uh, uh, this, uh, if you can see that the, the two uh, sections in the in the lower in the lower part of the screen, the long section and the, and the, and the cross section show a uh, a kind of not 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 strictly speaking a courtyard, but a but a, a, a tall space that that leads up to uh, to a skylight uh, that uh, brings in uh, natural light to a, a space that is essentially modern and that will uh, be, be be treated as a as a uh, uh, as, as, as a canvas for, for modern artistic expression. And, and so for, for me, uh, as an architect, you know, it, it becomes an, an exciting opportunity to understand this relationship between old and new and outside and inside, right? Uh, I mean, adaptive use has brought that to, to one's thinking that, you know, what is the relationship between the outside and the, and the inside? Uh, next slide, please. So the next slide, uh, the next slide is of a, a, a it's of uh, Panglao Church in, in Bohol. I, I don't have a, a a project in in, in Panglao, but I have these these pictures because I thought this was a good way to to talk about, uh, you know, in relation to, to to conservation and architecture, the the notions of time and and materiality, and and to 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 say here that you know when you have a a structure that has gone through as much time as 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 this church in 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 Panglao. Don't don't change it. Fix it, restore it, maintain it. But because of that sweep of time it has been through, there has a kind of of, of significance that uh, that you must respect, right? Uh, and also. You know, if, if, if you, wherever you are in this archipelago, if you live in a place that has a treasure like this, visit it every day. Uh, because, you know, we, we all have 
our own kinds of pantheons in, in the different places we live, right? That are significant and that educate us, whether we know it or not, right? And so let us let us appreciate these these places and be educated by them. Another reason I'm showing this picture is because of the the aspect of the materiality of of, of walls, right? Uh, the the, the 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 thickness of those of those walls the 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 uh, the imposing uh, presence of, of those buttresses they they I think they, they 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 play a role in my in my work you know uh, in in the design that I do as an architect next slide please uh, we have uh, uh, five more slides to go uh, this is a uh, so now this is going to be a series of of uh, just like the the, the Hark building these are uh, 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 building uh, pro uh, projects that uh, are, are recent or, or ongoing. So uh, not too long ago, we were involved with the, with the conservation management plan of, of Tagbilaran Cathedral in Bohol. And, and here, uh, again, the overlap of the lens of architecture and the lens of conservation. So we see in the upper left, you know, the, 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 how it's seen from the front, but here, uh, on the upper right is how it's seen from the back, and how the you know accretions of of, of time, new new and, and and somewhat discordant buildings have been added, had been added, and so in this uh, 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 proposal that these uh, uh, discordant buildings be be removed in order to reveal uh, the the rear facade of the of the church, so that it can be seen across the viaduct uh, coming from uh, Panglao as you approach Tagbilaran. Uh, next slide, please. The next slide is of a, of a project of a, a chapel in uh, in Palawan. Yeah. I, I show this because of, again, you know how how work and conservation and and, and exposure to the to the materiality of of, of walls, I find very uh, very intriguing. And so this this, this chapel shows a, a, a kind of a, you know an approach to the main space is is surrounded by these by these thick walls, but it was a little hard to see in the upper right but you know so your approach is surrounded by the thick walls but when you are in the main space itself of the chapel you're surrounded by openness as you see in the in the in the upper in the, in the lower right it's just it's just the roof over the the main space of the of the chapel next slide please the next slide shows uh again you know in 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 uh, exploring this notion of the, of the materiality of walls um uh, i this is a a a uh, a, uh, a, a an adaptive reuse project in an in an agro-industrial uh, uh, complex in in Batangas to convert uh, to convert it into a resort, uh, and you know that that experience of of, of walls uh, you know brings to brings to mind that this this potential of using packed earth to to create walls also of a certain material presence and material substance, a certain kind of uh, 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 in gravitas, right, that you, want, that you want to bring into, into, a, into an architectural uh, space. And by the way, you know, just well, on this slide, you know, if this poultry building could be retrofitted for a new purpose, you know, the film life could very well have also been adapted to be reused too. So, if, you know, uh, it, it goes to show that, you know, architecture has a role to play in the new lives of, of buildings in the creative way that uh, conservation can be brought to uh, extend the lives uh, of, 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 uh, of structures. The next slide, please. So the next slide shows, uh, this is my, my, I think my, my second to the last slide. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a current project. It's also, it's also a church, the Church of the Holy Spirit in Metro Manila. But, you know, if you, if you, if you recall those, those walls, the, the, the wall of the uh, uh, the, the buttress, the, the, the buttresses that surround walls of our of our of our uh, 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 heritage churches. You know, it is I, I, it, it's a, it's a fascinating presence of form that uh, I we are using here uh, you know, to create a new a new space, a new a new church that uh, that is inspired by the notion of, of buttresses. So if you if you you know you look at the upper left. Picture it, it looks like it's you know, it's a church with, with buttresses, and then you look at the at the interior. It's it, it looks like it's also you know a, 
uh, a, a church with with, 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 with with these depths, right? When you look at the at the at the, at the axonometric, you're going to see that it's these are not solidly filled argamasa walls that create the buttresses. This is actually folded, you know, it, these are folded walls that, that give you that 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 impression. So it's a it's a, it's a modern, it's a contemporary way of expressing this uh, this the, these ancient forms. Uh, next slide, please. And so uh, my my last slide is of, of another uh, a current project uh, which had been uh, uh, put on hold because of, of the of the pandemic uh, in other uh, circumstances. But it is to create a uh, a new space in in an existing space that is significant. And this is a uh, this is a, a to make a, a, a point that. There is, through a, a respectful understanding of, of the narrative of a place, the story of a place, coupled with the needs of the community, there is a way through, through architecture, coupled with conservation, for a site to move forward, right? So in this case, uh, we see in the upper left uh, a before picture of the, of a, of the Adoration Chapel, and then uh, uh, below it, you see a, a proposed image of that of that same Adoration Chapel, but with a new uh, augment an augmentation of the meaning of the of the of the site. You know, the uh, the Castrillo monstrance is the most significant part of this space and becomes the heart of this of this intervention. And then uh, the 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 lower the you see an image uh, in, the, in the lower uh, part of the slide. That's also a new, uh, a new uh, space, a Marian chapel that is going to balance uh, the baptistry on, on either side of the of the altar. So uh, they still retain the sense of of, of being light wells, but they uh, they they meet the, the the new needs. And in the case of the Marian chapel, it also helps to augment the significance of the site as a uh, a place devoted to to Mary. So, uh, next slide, please. My next slide is the is the is the last slide. A kind of of, of review of uh, 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 what we've seen the uh, you know, the the first half being a, a, a you know kind of a, an architectural autobiography as well as a conservation autobiography, and the second half being uh, of of a specific projects. So, uh, I hope that this is a uh, 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 been of use to to you, and I, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Architect Dom. That was a really wonderful, uh, uh, very wonderful presentation of uh, your journey as well as your uh, projects, uh, both uh, uh, upcoming and those that have already been built. Uh, it's quite inspiring to to see those. Um, uh, those works that have been inspired by previous uh, works of modern architecture. So um, I actually have a lot of questions already, uh, Sir, Sir Domno. Um, you have uh, started your uh, your talk about uh, how you you know you started your journey as an architect and your journey to understanding architecture. It, it started overseas, you know, before you came home to the Philippines and have actually began much of your career here. Now, have you ever wished uh, you have uh, started your journey here instead, just like the rest of the Filipino architects who started their careers here? Um, actually, you know, we all have, uh, you know, specific, specific journeys. And, uh, you know, I, I very much appreciate the, the fact that I had I had a chance to spend a year in Rome, uh, so you know, in, in terms of of of, of my education, uh, that was that was a, a real key uh, experience, and and what I wanted, I, mean, I knew I'd be coming home. Eventually, I, I mean, I knew eventually I would be coming home, but I, I wanted that my experience, if, if you know, with my with my education uh, abroad, I also wanted to 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 uh, experience working uh, working abroad and to sort of. To, to round out the experience that I would be bringing eventually home, right? Uh, because uh, 
for as long as I can remember, you know, when, when I had realized I wanted to become an architect, I was already, I was already in, in, in school. Uh, the images, that, the buildings I would imagine uh, were, were buildings here. Now, if I would create a new building, design a new building in my head, it was here in the Philippines. Right? No matter how cold the winters were there, right? I was imagining <laughs> buildings here. So, so uh, I mean, I knew I would eventually come back. I see. So uh, you've quoted Luis Khan on your uh, on your presentation earlier. What yeah. do you think is the most unmeasurable aspect of our historic Filipino buildings, particularly with modern art Filipino architecture? Well, I, I think uh, because when you, when you talk about this is you know what what I understand about it, right? I mean, when you talk about the about the unmeasurable, whether it's of uh, uh, in a in a in a colonial uh, era church, or in uh, or in the auditorium, the Film Life Building, for example, uh, there is there is something not specific. It is universal. There is a universal. Uh, you, you, you get a sense of it first because you are moved by it, right? Uh, you, you, you sense it. And, and that's, by the way, I'd like to, 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 to take this opportunity to say that we all have the capacity to sense the unmeasurable, right? This, the, we all have the capacity to be moved by space. We all have the capacity to, be, to experience that, 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 that special grace, that, uh, that a special place, that a special environment uh, provides to man, right? So, uh, so, so if, if you were to uh, speak of like, you know, what are the components of that of that of the unmeasurable? I, I think one, I mean, one one essential component of that would be light. You know, I mean, the way that a light comes into a space, you know, whether it's light streaming through from you know through an upper window into the nave of a of a of a stone church built in uh, uh, in the 17 or 1800s, right? Or or the light coming into uh, uh, you know a, a, a beautiful modern structure. Uh, it's 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 how you know th these are the the you know you you I, I've I've come to realize that you know the the best architecture is not about uh, luxurious materials, right? Uh, the best architecture is essentially about light. In space, right? It doesn't. It, it's it, it, because it is that it is that alchemy that that moves you. Mm -hmm. The alchemy that moves you. <laughs> Another question that I have in mind is since uh, you've uh, discussed earlier about the high ally building, no? uh, and uh, some people or the in the the modern heritage conservation movement will uh, will. Um, trace its roots from the high alight demolition. But why do you think the high alight building became that catalyst for the heritage conservation movement? Why not the other buildings uh, uh, that uh, were contemporary in that time? Um, I would mention probably the former Rizal Theater, uh, where the current Makati Shangri-La building was now in place. But it was also the most just the same. But why Why was high alight? Uh, the, the catalyst that you know moved everyone. I, I think it is a it is a uh, a unique combination of of, of things. You no, know? I mean for start and the, a combination of things that all contributed to the significance of the of the mm -hmm. site of the high high building. I mean, one has to do with its uh, its beauty, right? I mean, it is it is an art an architecturally handsome building, right? I mean, considered mm -hmm. I mean. I mean, journalistically referred to as, you know, one of the most beautiful Art Deco buildings in Asia, right? So, mm -hmm. so there, yes. there is, there is that, there is that side of things, and there's also the side of things that has to do with personal experience of people, of of the people of of the city, having either their own memories uh, of the place or memories of their of their parents or grandparents in the place. I mean, it, it played a significant role in the. In the lives of of of, uh, of people in the in the city, so so you know in in in, in a, for at least those those two reasons, uh, there, there there's something 
uh, you know, that, that, that made it the spark. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, no, no, parang, it was uh, just that unique moment in time, or I guess uh, it, it was, I don't know, a, uh, a moment in time where the stars have aligned and the people were, uh, were just moved by, the, uh, by that event. So that's why. Yeah, and, and the fact that it had survived World War II, by the way. I mean, I think that's also one mm-hmm. thing that, um, that breaks people's hearts. We have so few buildings that survived World War II. And then, you know, yes. when you see one of them demolished, it, it's really heartbreaking. Now, what do you think the government and the people could have done earlier in the day uh, to save our Philippine, Philippine modern architecture? Uh, because, you know, um, it, it's only parang... Uh, we are just now uh, realizing the importance, albeit a little bit too late, about you know the importance of of uh, preserving our modern architecture. But what do you think the government uh, and the people could have done earlier? Um, well, one thing that didn't exist when the High Life was demolished was the was the heritage law, right? Mm-hmm. So. So that piece of legislation was, uh, uh, some you know, many people say was was uh, very much inspired by the the demolition of, of the High Life building. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's one way to look at it. That, that the legislation could have been in place earlier, but then of course, unfortunately, even with such legislation, important buildings still get demolished, right? Um, mm-hmm. That is that is a uh, a situation that the least we can do is to speak about, right? I mean, I mean, we ourselves are not we are not the lawmakers, we are not the uh, the law enforcers, but we are the uh, we are observers of, of of events, right? And so, right. I mean, even even today, as 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 as, as you know, as things occur, or when things occur. Uh, it's important to speak about things, to bring them to light. Right. Now, um, we have a lot of questions already from the audience, and I would like to uh, start uh, calling them. Uh, there are very interesting questions uh, from those watching us today, and we thank you for watching. So let's call them one by one. I have a question here from Proverbial Rain Mujeres. Um, his question says, as observation, Bricks last longer, and the architectural designs during Spanish era still exist until now. While the newly developed materials today easily gets dilapidated, what can be the best recommendation than the next architectural designs, like the pyramid and the other world-renowned structures? Yeah, you know, uh, that's an interesting question. It's interesting that you mention brick because it is a it is a material I I try to use when I can. Uh, in fact, we mm-hmm. just. I mean, brick is a is a, is a is a wonderful material because, uh, you know, for one thing, it's 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 a timeless material, um, mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a, it's so perfectly suited to our climate, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I, we just completed a building where uh, in 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 Savior New Valley, a, a sports center where the, the the base of it is is clad entirely in brick, right? And and so it's not just for the for its cooling impact, for its climatic impact that we use brick, but it's also for how it uh, touches memory, right? Uh, and that's all. There's something about about brick. I don't know if it, it, it has to do uh, with uh, you know con- with, with, with 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 something ancient in in, in us, right? That uh, appreciates this uh, uh, this material, but it uh, it's it, it's it's wonderful to you know. Because I, I, you know, it's 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 something you can run your fingers across, right? It's uh, it's a uh, uh, the the only problem right now is that because people don't manufacture brick anymore like they used to, it's more ex- mm-hmm. it can it can be more expensive, right? Uh, I mean, my my only my only hope is that more people in the same the same way with 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 clay with clay roof tile. Uh, you know, if 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 more industry was to be devoted to the to the to the fabrication of of bricks, 
uh, or, mm -hmm. or, or other such materials, uh, I think it'd, it'd be wonderful. I think that's uh, the reason why Escuela Talier, uh, Escuela Talier's work is uh, very important to really um, teach the, you know, the, the traditional ways of uh, masonry and, uh, and, and, and building historic, uh, maintaining historic buildings. So yeah. Another question coming from uh, someone who's watching also over YouTube, uh, Ms. Nina Cristel Suminta. Good evening, architect. I'd like to ask your opinion, Paul, on facadism. Does this conservation technique make heritage conservation better? Or does it create lesser value or significance towards the heritage asset? Yeah, but well, that's that's a, that's a good question. And you, 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 you mm -hmm. recall that the, I guess there was a sense of, 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 of facadism in in the proposal for the Misamis Occidental Capitolio, where you know, really mm -hmm. all that's all that's retained is is its is its facade. Uh, you know, a a building is a is a, is a is a vessel of its own authenticity, right? And mm -hmm. and and as, and as the building uh, 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 gets retrofitted or, or, or evolves over time. That sense of its of its authenticity must must only get enhanced, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, there you know, there there's a way for for, for a building to to move forward in, in in time, you know. And an essential way of of, of doing it is to understand, as I pointed out with the with the National Museum, for example, is to understand its significance and the hierarchy of significance, you know. That 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 you have in that building. I mean, a, 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 a structure has many, you know, has, has many components, and it is therefore uh, actually the same way that, that the city has many buildings, right? So it is your uh, it is important, therefore, whether in that in that specific building uh, or in in a specific city, to understand its components and to to know the components and then to to assess their significance. So, uh, in the in the same way with the with the with the National Museum, right? Uh, mm -hmm. There, not not all of it was. You know, there were there were there were certain spaces that, that had to to change because they had to become uh, galleries, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, but they were they were the spaces that were not high up on the hierarchy as let's say Marble Hall, right? Or high up mm -hmm. in the hierarchy as as the as the exterior facade or or the or the courtyard facade. So, uh, any any project is an opportunity to to understand the narrative of the project, right? I mm -hmm. I don't think that the project uh, is able to tell that a building is able to tell its story uh, if if one just relies purely on a facade. Right? Because mm -hmm. you know, it, I mean, uh, there there must be other components in 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 that in that building. There might you know like important spaces, like an important lobby that that has uh, you know you you may not you know you may probably not be able to preserve everything in 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 the structure, but but you know if 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 what you're doing you know contributes to a diminished sense of understanding the building. Uh, then it's it's not a good thing, and and I think yeah. that you know if something is if it's just purely uh, the facade, I mean there there must be some kind of uh, uh, dialogue, you know, between what's old and what's new in in a project, right? And and, and the, the dialogue is not is not a is not a uh, you know a quick exchange, you know, it's it's a, it's a mm -hmm. deep conversation, right? Yeah. That's uh... well. Actually, I do have a a, a follow up question to that, no? Because you know, some architects and even so called heritage experts, uh, admittedly, are quite you know purists in their approach towards heritage conservation, and consequentially, they would have certain reservations towards uh, augmentation of heritage buildings with modern structures, you know, especially. Uh, like the projects uh, that you've shown earlier. Uh, it could be a project that you've done before or the projects that were done by other architects as well. 
Um, does this mean that you know their their understanding uh, uh, of heritage were stunted because of their puritanic philosophies? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's it's it's. I just you know, wanted I, to you know. I just mm-hmm. you know you know who uh, who I miss uh, you know because that, that question would have been you know that that, that question reminds me of Augusto Villalon actually. Uh-huh. You know, because it, it, you knew him, right? And, and and he was he was such a a a, uh, a calm and 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 uh, considerate voice, who who really avoided what what you'd call the draconian, uh, or you know only you know my way or the highway kind of attitude, because uh, mm-hmm. because architecture isn't like that, and neither is conservation. No, I mean it, it's yes. it's. It's 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 dialogue, right? It's it's dialogue. It's it's uh, you know it's it's the work of, of, of teams. It's it's the work of 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 understanding something from different from different points of view. And so uh, you know, there's 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 room for for purism, for example. You know, mm-hmm. uh, for example, I, when I when I talked earlier about example, a Spanish colonial church, right? That mm-hmm. you know. That uh, you know, I, I call these you know vessels of time, right? Uh, as much as you can, what you do with them is 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 you restore them. You know, I mean, there might be spaces that are, that are not that are not seen that are that need to you know uh, be be converted for to for 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 new use or or, or or whatever, right? But but in general, you know, a, a structure like that. Should continue to tell it's it's already its ancient story, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, like a, a more recent, more recent architecture, more recent structures, I think, are able to accommodate uh, this di- this dialogue more uh, more freely, right? Of course, it it still needs to be done with with the greatest sensitivity. Like you, you don't want to you don't want to change the 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 in 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 essence the general appearance of of a of a place you know it, it's 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 exterior in a way that uh, uh, you know could be considered jarring I mean if you are to do something like that like like again I, I go I go to the to the National Museum right I mean the the dome the dome of the of the Tree of Life uh, you know it, great effort was made to create a new form. That the dialogues and complements the existing, right? So there, you know, there, then that that's that's where really you know the architectural lens plays an important role because it's you know it it it, it has to do with 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 with, you know, with harmony with with, with proportion uh, uh, with with narrative, right? Um, I mean, in in that case, you know, the fact that that doom also brings to mind, you know. Now, because a building like that, you could imagine a building like that in, in Washington or in, or in Paris, a neoclassical building that has a dome like that, right? What, you know, in, in, a, in a kind of an abstract sense, right? So, um, so it's it's a it's a case to case basis. Um, mm-hmm. There are some there are some places where it would be where it would be out of place. I mean, witness the the discussion about the Notre Dame in Paris, for example. I mean, uh, yeah. In the end, you know, the best solution was really to bring it back to how it was. I mean, there there are various you know ideas of creating something entirely new with it, but but considering again Notre Dame as a vessel of time and what it's been through and what is what it's meant for 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 generations of, of, of so many people, uh, you know, in in the end, it was you know going back to the to how it was was the way to go. So I, I think the yes. answer here, it's really a case-to-case basis that is a product mm-hmm. of, of dialogue. You know? A product of dialogue. Yes, I agree. Now, uh, we actually do have someone who is going to join us via video conference, and he wants to uh, ask you personally a question. And I will be joined now by one of our viewers. His name is Santiago Cruz. Hey. Hello, Santiago. Good evening. Hello. Um, where are you from? Where hello. are you from, sir? Hello, sir. I'm from uh Quezon City. Sige po. Ano po yung question kay Architect Dom? 
Uh, my question is mainly, um, are there any pre-war structures whose interiors still retain their pre-war designs? Like, um, as you mentioned, that fascism, fascism is quite uh, popular now, but are there any that retain their pre-war interiors? And secondly, for structures that have been lost, such as the high ally, um, should they be reconstructed or what else could be done for places that are no longer there? That, that's mainly my question. My two questions. Okay. Uh, for, for your first question, pre-war structures, I, I suggest you go to Escolta. Escolta is, is one of the, uh, uh, in, in, in downtown Manila, you know, you, you have buildings like the First United Building, formerly the, the Perez Manilio. Uh, it's, it's lobby, it's, it's stairwell, it's, 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 it's exterior. It's, uh, in fact, it's largely the way it was from, you know, uh, it, it's largely retained the sense of how it was uh, when it was built before the, before the war, right? Uh, you also have the Regina building and, and, and the Calvo building. Uh, so, I mean, yes, it's, it's called, it's a great, it's a great place uh, for that. Uh, now, in terms of reconstructing, uh, I mean, in, in, in general, you know, there's, there is the, the matter of, 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 of authenticity, right? Um, it's, there are cases, of course, where, where you reconstruct. I mean, uh, uh, you know, Warsaw destroyed in, uh, uh, in World War II. I think, you know, Dresden, you know, they were destroyed, destroyed in World War II, but they were, they were reconstructed uh, as best as they could. Right, uh, based on what whatever documentation they could they could gather, uh, so so now there's a sense of, of them being, to a large degree, how they were before the war, um, and actually when you think about it, you know, quite early on there was a chance to do that in Intramuros, right, because there's still a lot that was left, a lot of uh, of the of the ruins could still have been used as a base for for uh, for reconstruction. Um, You know, I, 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 as I said earlier, it's it's a, it's a case to case basis, and and each case has a different set of motivations, right? For example, to rebuild the high ally, right? I mean, I'm not I'm not saying yes or no, but I, I you know, one would want to know why, right? Uh, one would want to know uh, what what the motivation would be. Uh, it's you know, is it because there are there are quite quite a number of buildings that you'd you'd love to rebuild. I mean, I, if I had to be completely impractical about it, I'd say you know rebuild the Film Life building, right? Uh, but uh, it's but you wonder, and we you could probably still do that with the Film Life, right? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, with with the, the high ally, I think you wonder if if. You know, I, I, I guess with the high lie, I don't have an answer because you know emotionally, I, I would love to see it again, right? I mean, as a, uh, but then one that, but then the other, another side of me say, ask, you know, I mean, has that ship sailed already? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. is it? Uh, um, I mean, as I say that, I'm also saying, but there's nothing on that site, right? It's still a blank site, so uh, so it's it's still it's still a uh, it's still an option, right? Um, but it 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 would have to be. I mean, one 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 thing that 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 comes to play uh, in 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 discussions really is is motivation and and purpose, right? And I don't. There would have to be. There, there would, there would, there would have to be a, a reason to do it. Right? There would have to be a, a, a reason to rebuild it, right? Yeah. Like, I, if I were to ask you, what, what would, what would that, what could, what could that reason be? I'm sorry, was that uh, for me? Yeah, if you have to, yes, yeah. I'm not really sure, but there seems to be like um, certain parts of uh, community identities that were met that were possibly attached to these buildings and now to see them gone, um, a part of that community seems to have been lost. 
in in that would be my opinion. Like certain reminders yeah. of the past, if you will. Yeah, and it, you know, if, if if there's enough interest, I mean, there is. I mean, it's it's a question worth pursuing, then, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But then so, also, I guess, raise the question as you mentioned earlier about um, is it really depending on the motivations behind it? Because um, in some degree, wouldn't these just be uh, imitations or pastiches? Yes, of, uh, that's 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 where that's where the that's where the, the the problem would be would be the matter of authenticity, right? Um, you know the, the 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 question of authenticity is actually very interesting. I mean, it it, it in, in in another talk I I spoke uh, I spoke this mat the, the the matter of time, right? Because I think time plays a role uh, in relation to authenticity, right? I mean, uh, maybe maybe right after it, after it is rebuilt, maybe there was something inauthentic about Warsaw, right? But then. But then now, you know, many decades after, uh, when people walk the streets, I have I have never been to Warsaw, but I, but I've heard I've heard good things about it, right? Uh, you know, what is the experience of 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 people as they're as they're walking through it? I mean, does it does it create in their minds a sense of of traveling back in time, right? Uh, I I I pose these questions because they're 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 fascinating ones. They're fascinating in uh, because at the heart of them, they're really about how man relates to his to his environment, right? And what constitutes an environment. I mean, if, if you were to take that Warsaw discussion further and say, uh, well, I mean, what if we to recreate Warsaw in the virtual world and just put on a, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, just being a be be in a room, or I don't know. Make you could even be on a on a on a on a treadmill. I don't I don't know, right? But you know, uh, could 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 that be a a a uh, an educational experience, an enriching experience for for the individual? Um, and, and and then and then that then brings us then to you know. That earlier question that Joel that Joel brought up, uh, that in, in in which in which the the essential answers are are light and space, right? So uh, so you, you can see it. It's there's no there's no no straightforward answer to to mm -hmm. that, right? Uh, uh, and I don't know if I would have answered that question in that same way maybe five years ago, right? Uh, it just goes to show, you know, the the, the world the, the world is changing, uh, and and how we perceive it, how we document it, how we observe it, uh, is also changing. And uh, um, I mean, one is almost tempted to say that you know we can hardly keep up, right? So. <laughs> it wasn't very straightforward, was it? <laughs> Thank you for your thoughts. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Santiago, for uh, that question. And um, very glad to uh, hear someone from the audience uh, asking uh, very thought-provoking questions. <laughs> Even Sir Dom is uh, quite having, you know, uh, uh, was yeah, it hard to <laughs> It was quite no, challenging, well, you know, yes. <laughs> you know, because, but, you know, Joel, these questions are important mm -hmm. to be asked because, uh, as I said, yes. You know, my answer five years ago or 10 years ago may have been different, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But, but what, I, what, what I do find is that that's important is that it needs to be discussed, right? Uh, yes. Um, I, remember, I, I remember maybe, I don't know when it was, I, I, was, at, I, was, I was attending a, a, uh, an e-commerce general assembly with in and 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 this is in 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 Japan and I remember there was a discussion about you know the evolving role of 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 of, of sacred spaces in 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 European old European capitals right because uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, because faith you know, faith is changing in those places right 
Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the structures remain the same. And, uh, you know, and, and so what, what, what becomes the relationship between, you know, those, those inert structures and, and a, an evolving uh, psychic environment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and back then, I mean, I, I remember the, the, the answer was it, it, it needs to be discussed. And, and uh, there's a lot of, of, of the answer rooted in the community also. Regardless of the uh, uh, of the answer, whether it has changed over the years, the matter has yes. to be discussed. Okay. Yes. Another question coming from uh, someone uh, over YouTube. His name is Arvind Patawaran. Good evening, Architect Dominic. Big fan right here. By the way, here's my question. How does the genius loci of a particular building or location affects the overall design approach towards a certain project? I think it, it has everything to do with it. I mean, I, I, a genius loci or, or the spirit of place. I mean, okay, this, this relates to, uh, I guess you'd say to the ineffable aspects of a, of a project. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there, there, there are certain aspects of a, of, a, of a site, you know, you go to a site or you go to a place that you can observe, right? You can observe and you can, you, you, you can categorize, you can, you can, uh, you can document uh, quite easily, but there are also certain mm -hmm. aspects, and I think that they have to do with, with uh, you know, the, the genius low side or the spirit of place that touch you or move you in 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 a different way, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, in Tagalog, I say, ibang de tinge, you know, I mean, a different place is a different way of 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 touching you or or or, or uh, I mean but to answer the question it, it has it has it has everything to do with it right um, mm -hmm. it, but it, it's an interesting question because you know in this in this uh, during this pandemic right I mean at some point last year you know we got we got a we got a project uh, to design a building in a place that we we had not all all we could see was what we could see on the computer you know photographs uh, Google Earth uh, you know topographic plans that we we made a model of and sketch up to get a sense of, of the of the topography and mm -hmm. and 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 fortunately we were able to you know to to come up with 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 a response that. Um, was valid, right? But mm -hmm. it wasn't complete because we had not been to the site yet, right? I mean, yeah. It's so in the in the case of the project, going to the site then became very important, and we did it. You know, we you know with all the protocols and all the you know, but we did it because we had to because, um, mm -hmm. you know, there, there 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 are things about the site you cannot just see in pictures or in words. You you yes. You have to you have to feel it. Right, and that goes. By the way, also that also applies with with you know with existing structures. I mean, although that, that goes into into you know another in, in uh, you know, but they, they all they all have a sense of place. I have my final question for you, uh, Architect Dom. You know, uh, to to close your uh, talk for tonight. Your personal journey has. You know, taught you many things about your relationship with architecture and heritage you know, from the lens of heritage conservation. What do you think your fellow architects and non-architects in the heritage field should best learn from their own journeys? You know, I think it, the, the, the essential answer to that is to is to trust your your response to a place, um, mm -hmm. whether you're an architect or not. Because I, I, I do I do believe in the in the universality, as I said earlier, of the impact of a special, of a significant place. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't happen often. You know, it doesn't happen often to me either. You know? But but what but when it does, when you're when you are moved, when you are moved by a place. Um, I mean, there, in, 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 other, in other talks, I've used the term aesthetic experience, right? Uh, or 
you know, it, it may be another way of say it will be, you know, uh, you know, a moment of grace or or, or things. But but I, I think that but one one privilege we all have as as human beings is that it's the capacity, the capacity to be to be touched, right? To be touched by by a a significant place, by by a special place, and and when that happens, remember it. Well, one way or another chronicle it because uh and I, I i mean i say this to everyone but but i i, I say it uh, especially to architects because we as architects um we we aim to create spaces that will move the visitor right so we need to have a a a store, you know, a, a kind of a, a store of memories where that also happened to us, and it has to happen to you in order for you to be able to share it through your design with others, right? Um, and then you know the, the same goes. Also, I mean, in, in, in a similar vein to those who are who are not architects, but who who also. Um, are moved by places, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the the you know the the fact that a, a a place can move you in the in that way means that that place, that structure, that site is significant to the community, right? It, it, it's mm -hmm. it's it's significant to uh, to to people, and you know, not not necessarily through architecture, but there are other ways also then to respect that and to to conserve it, you know, and to help bring it forward. Um, well, that was a very moving, uh, <laughs> that, that indeed uh, uh, moves us because uh, I can actually uh, reflect on uh, that particular moment when I was moved by uh, visiting a particular uh, architecture that was like, yeah, yeah, as you mentioned it, a moment of grace. And I think uh, all of us architects would have that in one way or in another. Well, with that, maraming maraming salamat po, architect uh, Dominic Galicia, for sharing your story about your journey in understanding architecture from the lens of heritage. Thank you for very, very much for this very wonderful talk. And we really do hope to see you very soon in the coming days, hopefully in a, in, in uh, in a more personal manner, when this person, whole yes. uh, lockdown is yes, we really do miss you uh, seeing each other and uh, working with uh, you and in uh, in various ways. And I'm pretty sure uh, all of us would you know would want to learn more from you, but you know we only have a, a certain limited number of time. So uh, we just hope that we we would have another chance to uh, to talk about. Uh, these you know these things with you so again maraming maraming salamat po architect maraming salamat thank you so much joe <laughs> good to see you thank you everyone. all right so um for those who are uh reg who have registered to our webinar um please make sure that you fill out this evaluation form for the registered participants who uh have uh uh registered for this um for this webinar with architect Dom Galicia, I'm posting it now on this uh, uh, on this chat. No, you can go to uh, https colon two forward slash bit dot ly slash pamana talks eval one for May 2021. Uh, so this link is your uh, evaluation form for this uh, pamana talk, so that you would be you would be able to receive your certificate of registration oh uh, sorry certificate of participation uh over email and we will also post this link on the gki pamana facebook uh gki pamana community facebook group so uh before we uh uh wrap up uh, i would like to just uh share as well some other announcements i'm pretty sure many of you are still looking forward for our upcoming um uh, uh upcoming webinars so for this, uh, yeah, for this uh, upcoming uh, Friday, next Friday, May 21st, we're going to have architect Karine Paredes-Santillan uh, 
She's a pedagogical lead of the College of Architecture of the University of Santo Tomas. She will be talking about Masiana PH towards the understanding, analysis, and conservation of modern Filipino architecture. So please do register on this uh, webinar, especially for architects who want to learn more about Masiana PH. And also on May 28th, we're going to have uh, Reverend Brian Brigoli, uh, the chairman of the Cebu Archdiocese and Commission on Culture and Heritage. His talk is uh, all about the heritage conservation works in the Archdiocese of Cebu, Kapanulundanan sa Simbahan sa Subbo. So that will be on May 28th, Friday. That will be our last webinar for the National Heritage Month. So please don't forget to register through this link at https colon two forward slash grupokalinangan.org slash webinars slash pamana talks. Uh, please make sure that you uh, uh, take note of your order number because that will be important for you to, to, uh, uh, to fill up on your evaluation form so that you will receive your e-certificate. Okay? So again, maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, please uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook uh, at Grupo Kalinangan and also follow us on our Twitter and Instagram uh, social media accounts, Grupo Kalinangan. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Grupo Kalinangan. And uh, sign up for our uh, email newsletter at uh, our website, HTTPS colon two forward slash Grupo Kalinangan.org. And please also like the NHCP official Facebook page, facebook.com slash NHCP1933. And also the National Kincentennial Committee official Facebook page to get updated on the latest uh, updates and events regarding the Kincentennial, the ongoing Kincentennial of uh, the victory of the Battle of Mactan, the first circumnavigation of the world in the Philippines, and the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines. Marami pa po mangyayari over the next few months. And with that, I would like to leave you with a quote. A quote from a very prominent Greek philosopher who lived during the golden era in Greece. And uh, I would like to leave you with this. This is by Pericles, who was a Greek statesman and general of Athens during the Athenian Golden Age. And he said, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. So maraming maraming salamat po. And uh, we'll see you again, mga kapamana. And uh, until then, please be safe. And uh, we'll see each other again next Friday for Pamana Talks. In the meantime, please stay safe and have a good night. Have a very, very great weekend and happy Heritage Month po sa inyong lahat.